Hello, this is Sid Roth here, and I am doing my favorite thing. I am on a new set for a brand new show on our network. It's Supernatural Network. And the show is called The Truth Project. And the guest, of course, uh, the host is Alan Strudwick. Now, Alan, what are you trying to accomplish on this show? Well, you know, because of my background, I was deceived for many years in the New Age and as a leader. So my aim of the Truth Project is to bring forward truth about that so other people don't get deceived. I mean, my, my heart was, how did I get deceived? I was an intelligent man. Why would I do that? So I want to help other people not get deceived by bringing the truth, the truth about the New Age, but also the truth about the works of the enemy, the truth about what's happening in the world right now, and the truth about God's Word. Well, I'll tell you what. It sounds like the Truth Project. That's yes. how you came up with the exactly. name of it. Uh, but uh, there are some things we're going to, you know, I, I like to keep things light, but this is really serious business. Business. It affects Christianity. It affects the government. It affects nations. It affects society. It 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 is so insidious, as you explain, and no one can explain it like him. And let me tell you, just give you a brief synopsis of his background. Uh, his father remarried to a woman that was into the new age, and she loved gurus and things like that. And his father was very wealthy. And they flew into their home, the top gurus from around the world, to just teach the two of them. Uh, and so he was sitting at the feet as a, as a young child, no, no, no Christian foundation, uh, of the top gurus in the world, the top uh, yoga people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he got mentored, and they saw he had gifting. And they said, we want to groom you to be one of the leaders of the new age to introduce Hinduism, now get this, into the West in a package, it'll be received. And it is insidious, Alan. For instance, because they kept bumping you up because of the gifting that you had, mm -hmm. uh, you, you uh, went to secret meetings on the merger of the New World Order and the New Age. Uh, tell me some of the things you learned at these secret meetings. Well, the, the meetings, Sid, were, pre were primarily to discover and to discuss strategies in order to bring in a new world order. But one of those is that it couldn't be done straight away. The strategy was to do it over two or three decades so that we could wean in these strategies. Yeah, you know, here in America, it's instant McDonald's, <laughs> yes. instant everything. Yes. Uh, and, but, but the devil doesn't mind taking time to infiltrate society. Yeah, exactly. But also because of the fact that, the, um, th as you said, Hinduism into normal society, who would even think of, of that? Of course. In fact, it, it was regarded as crazyville back in the days when I was a leader in the New Age. So it, it had to be done on a weaning basis. And it had to be done from many different aspects. And so we didn't, it wasn't just me in the meetings and leaders of the New Age, it was leaders of other organizations, wealthy men, globalists that were involved in things. And so we had to hit it from every aspect was the strategy over those two to three decades. And God is so gracious. He's minding his own business and he has a vision of Jesus. But like so many Muslims and Jews today that are having dreams and visions of Jesus, he had no foundation to know what to do with it. So he was uh, reading his Bible and teaching his New Age courses, uh, and he didn't even know of a conflict between the two. But because he's been on both sides, and as he read the Word, he understood, because he's been on both sides, he is an invaluable gift to the body of Messiah. Now, Alan, um, you're now exposing 
w some of the things that you worked on and mm -hmm. explored and just talked about 20 years ago that are now reality. Uh, for, by the way, you said something pretty interesting. You said Christians, based on the, what you were taught, were very inferior to everyone else. Why did you think oh, that? Oh, of course. That's a Hinduistic belief about Is souls it? being reincarnated oh, every lifetime. Right. And they, they develop and they, and they move up that spiritual rank. My guru, when I was initiated, I was told, that's how ego works, is that I was here 300,000 lifetimes. That's a long time on the planet. <laughs> a long time on the planet. Who would want to uh, be here that long? No, exactly. <laughs> but we were also taught by the gurus was that Christians were here for their first lifetime and they didn't know anything spiritually. And that's, that's why even today we're seeing the result of that type of teaching, deceptive teaching, where there's people even thinking that people like you and I that are believers of Jesus, that we're old and we're old mythical. We don't, it doesn't make sense. We're not, we're not enlightened. We're old fashioned. Old fashioned, exactly. And part of the Hinduistic goal is that you become enlightened every lifetime and become more spiritual. And so therefore you have ascended. Now, something that's really interesting for me is now, especially in the last couple of years, I'm seeing in the press and in politics these things starting to show up. Where I saw just the other day an article where they were saying that uh, a president of the United States is actually an a ascended Christian, hmm. an ascended enlightened Christian. That was the thing that we were trying to implement and I'm now seeing it implemented. Isn't that amazing? I know. And then I saw an article on the news where it said new world order is necessary. I'm like, they're starting to mention it now. It's, uh, well, I want to get into some things you will find fascinating, uh, not necessarily in order of priority, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, the way the new age is even creeping into the church. Mm -hmm. How many Christians do I know, or you know, or you know, how many that are into something innocent, exercise, yoga? Tell me, uh, tell me from, having been on both sides, what could be wrong with breathing right and exercising and stretching? There's nothing wrong Come with on, that at all. Up. Yeah, nothing. There's nothing wrong with breathing and <laughs> exercising and stretching, but yoga is not that. What yoga is, is a Hinduistic yoking to the Hindu gods. Why? They, they, oh, I, a Christian wouldn't go in if they started talking about it. Well, we wouldn't think they would, but remember, Christians can, there was a warning that was put out that to lack of knowledge, we can perish. And there's a lot of lack of knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. Many Christians that do yoga come to me and talk to me and they say, why? And, they, and I ask them, why are you doing it? Well, to exercise or to yeah. stretch or do that. And I said, well, did you know that it has this involved in it, what it actually is? It, it, is it is, true that when you do this stretching, it is considered by Hindu gods as worship to them? Yeah, let me at least first explain it. It's not stretching. Uh, what it, is it? I, it takes stretching <laughs> and you need to stretch your muscles to do those poses. But more importantly, it is a spiritual um, practice that was set up two, 3,000 years ago in the Upanishads, which is like the Hinduistic teachings and wisdom and spiritual. It was set up so that every Hindu could actually go into a position that would evoke or open the door to that demon that would be assigned for, or that God for that actual yoking. So it's like a spiritual practice and it's about yoking. Now, I've had some Christians will come to me and say, yes, but that's okay, I do yoga and I don't do that other stuff. Well, but you actually are. As soon as you do that pose, according to, even today in India, the Hindus still do the same thing. It's yoking to the Hindu gods. Brahman and Kali and Vishnu, they're not yoking Okay, when you Allah. say yoking, what do you mean by yoking? Yoking is that where you, the same as I did when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. You yoked with Jesus. I yoked with Jesus because he said his yoke was easy. I'm, I'm connecting to that God. And every one of those positions is designed for evoking a different type of Hindu God into their life to affect them. Or to, another thing that happens in certain breathings, they're not just breathing right, there, there are certain meditational, Eastern meditational breathing exercises that are involved in yoga that will actually activate a thing called the Kundalini spirit, which is at the base of someone's spine. I've actually seen Christians having the manifestation of that as in a, the evil manifestation. 
Right. And it one, brings one thing that you know, and you know for sure, is the devil is a great counterfeit oh, artist. Yes. And so, therefore, what happens is a, a Christian gets saved, and then they see the authentic, and they toss out the th authentic because they saw the counterfeit mm. in the new age. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and it's it is an interesting thing with yoga because. I'm, there's so many, not just Christians, but I need to put the, bring you back to those secret meetings. One of the things that came out of the meeting as well, especially with spiritual leaders that we were involved with, one of our aims was to bring in a one world religion. So in order to bring in a one world religion, we needed to bring down other religions or neutralize them. So it was about all religions are okay all paths lead to God. Didn't matter whether you're a Muslim, didn't matter if you're a Tao or a Buddhist or a Hindu or whatever. It didn't matter who you were, you, we would all end up into Nirvana or into God. And so when there's that deception like that, that anyone will do it and it's watered down, what started to happen is we went, what's one thing that right now no one believes and thinks it's crazy, but we could wean them into? And we chose yoga. Hmm. We actually purposely chose that we could in 30 years have yoga come to the point that it was so common, people would argue to keep doing it, even as believers. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Out of curiosity, is there any correlation with something like Pilates and yoga? Pilates is fine. It's not, oh, they are not, yeah, you can stretch with Pilates. Oh, God. I, I have known Christians it, <laughs> that go to the gym and run stretch classes. We can do that. What about the Course in Miracles? Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard uh, Oprah teach it for a year on the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, anything wrong with the Course in Miracles? Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Miracles, I know. Course. I actually, in one of the Truth Project shows, dedicated a whole show to this. It is, this is the, the perfect example of deception. They use the word Holy Spirit. They use the word heaven. They use the word sin. They, used, uh, they talk about Jesus. They talk about all of that. Now, if you, in the books, that's all they do. However, if you get the introduction book, which you can apply to and get, it actually explains what they mean by those words. The first thing, sin, is not sin. It's just something in our mind. Heaven oh. doesn't, they say heaven doesn't exist. Heaven actually is something, that, this is how weird it gets, that heaven is something that we fell asleep six billion years ago and dreamt actually exists. These, these are all in the booklet. And um, if you're watching The Truth Project, you'll be able to get an idea of exactly everything in that book that, that describes it. And this is what the enemy does. He uses the same words, but this full of deception. Now, how do I know it's deception? Because the course itself was channeled by a lady. Excuse me. When you, you define sorry, channel. Channeled is where opening yourself up to channel or allow a spirit, in the New Age that is, a spirit to come into you and then take over your body. And so she had this spirit approach. She was not a Christian. She was actually against God. Uh, her husband was not a Christian. He was against God. But she believed, and it was a psychic that actually came to her and said to her, you will write something that will change the world. The interesting thing is the one that she says she channeled was Jesus Christ. And then she says in her own writing, the reason Jesus Christ supposedly was channeled through her to write this book is because the Bible is wrong and it needed to be rewritten and redone the right way. But you don't hear, none of that is revealed that it's, it's playing with people. Oh, yes. It's semantics. It's using a word that you have a great Christian meaning for mm -hmm. that means something completely different. And then when you get to a textbook, you think that's the Christian meaning, yes. but it means the opposite of what the Bible teaches. Exactly. Uh, how could so many people, I mean, there are so many people involved in the Course in Miracles. How could they be so, so many people to see? Exactly. And I, I know even personally pastors that are using it and talking about it and recommending it and even doing home studies and Bible studies on the thing. And it's not even a Bible. Um, Excuse me. Was there an intentional yes. conspiracy to get all of this uh, Hinduism mm -hmm. into Christianity? Yes, it was. In fact, that was one of my jobs in these, when I came out of the secret meetings was to bring strategies together and implement them that would actually go after Christians. Now, I'm not, I'm not proud of this, I, but I, thousands of Christians that I would meet and purposely go to, mm -hmm. even hold meetings deceptively to, to get to them, I would pull them away from their faith. I would create doubt. I would create confusion. I would get them to question things. I would, in, in many different ways, that was my job, so that they would be weaned away from their faith in God. 
But um, you had a lot of things happen when God started dealing with you mm. when you were in this leadership role. Uh, and, and one of the things that you had is you went into this because you wanted to help people. Exactly. You wanted to help the world. Mm. But you told me that that wasn't the fruit you were seeing. What fruit did you see from people in these things? Oh, I started seeing horrific things, which I won't mention too many of them, but I saw things from where people would end up in mental institutions. They were having psychotic episodes. There was other times when they were having, um, they would just leave their family, leave their wife, no, and mm -hmm. run off with someone else or go and just do their own thing. There was just no accountability, no responsibility, but a lot of health problems, especially in the mental health area. Um, suicides, uh, quite a few of those. And so you can imagine, here I'm thinking I'm transforming someone's life to be better, and then I get a phone call that they've killed themselves or that someone else has found their body and all that. It was horrific, these things. Let me uh, switch gears for a minute. There's a lot in the news and a lot of money being spent throughout the world uh, for um, the world is coming apart. There's we got to get rid of the pollution in the cars, the pollution in the cows. No, I don't think they're talking about that, <laughs> but maybe they are. Uh, but um, is this part of the whole package? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, you said it. There's a whole package, and it was. It, they've had, the, in the sense of, let me tell you this way: the globalists do exist. Um, there was a founding globalist called Cecil Rhodes back in 1850 to 1902 when he passed away. His, one of his aims was to take over, of course, and be he's the father of the globalist movement in the sense of what he needed to do and what he wanted to do. And he brought like-minded people to join him. And throughout then the years, many different globalists, from the Rockefellers to the Rothschilds to whoever, all joined and, and did a plan. So when you say a package, there was this package of that when I, by the time they, the meetings happened in the New Age, even the New Age was planned to be able to get to a certain point from the early 1900s of bringing Eastern things to the West and make them acceptable. And then from the 60s and 70s and 80s, which I was involved in the New Age, then the step from those meetings was then to take it the next step. Uh, to be quite honest, I, I thought there'd be another step over another 10, 20 years, but I'm seeing the same thing everywhere in the news now, which matches up to exactly the whole package that we were involved in, everything from politics to, to news medias to everything, everything to get that message across to the world. By the way, on reincarnation, mm -hmm. I was talking with a woman the other day, and she's in the new age, and she, this is what she said to me, I have messed my life up so much that I need to come back for another chance. But, oh, let me oh. tell you something. <laughs> Here's the good news. Not only have you messed your life up so much that you have to come back for a second chance, every human outside of God in human form, Jesus, has messed their life up that they need another chance. That's why Jesus came. How would you like to live a life where your past is wiped away as if it never existed? I mean, that is an amazing mm. thing. You don't, how would you, you, you don't have to die and come back as a cow or something. Exactly. You, 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 you know, <laughs> seriously, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. Alan knows this. I know this. I want you to know this. I want you to know that the blood of Jesus is enough to give you a new beginning. Without the dying process, such a deal. He already died for you. If you will say this prayer, and by the way, Alan, I don't know how you feel about this, but many people say a prayer, and it's their life insurance policy. Mm. It isn't a transformation. Mm. And what I'm convinced from my own life is everyone needs an experiential encounter with yes. God. And not my experience, not Alan's experience, but you. Mm. And once you have that experience, no one, no education will talk you out of your faith. No one could do that with me. As the rabbis say about me because I'm Jewish, Alan, they say, it's too late for Sid Roth. 
<laughs> and then they come up to me and they say, are both your parents Jewish? They're praying. I'll say no. <laughs> and I say, yeah. As a matter of fact, my ancestry goes back to the tribe of Judah. How do I know this? I did a DNA, and they had DNA from a woman from Judah. I even know what tribe I'm from, Rabbi. Uh, but anyway, when I told the woman this, mm. I touched a nerve. Yeah. I touched an important nerve. And when I'm telling you this, this is your time to have your own encounter with God. What you'll have, that's between you and God. I don't know. I'm not God, <laughs> you know. But I want you to have your own experience with God. And this is the start. How God will work it out, that's between you and God. Some need a dramatic encounter like Alan had and I had. I needed it. There's no way I would have crossed over. And others don't need that. But God knows what you need. So repeat this prayer after me and mean it to the best of your ability. Out loud, by the way, everything was created in this earth by the spoken word of God, and everything is going to begin by you speaking the word of God. Repeat out loud. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away every mistake I've ever made. And I am clean. I'm starting fresh. As if this is the first day of my life. Jesus, I want you to come inside of me and be my Lord. Lord means Lord, by the way. Be my Lord and Savior. I love you, Lord. I want to know you. I want my own experience with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Alan, I understand women are really discriminated against in the new age when it comes to reincarnation. Explain that. Okay. In the New Age, they don't think they believe it. But the bottom line in Hinduism is that when you are wanting to evolve spiritually and what to do with karma and their laws mm -hmm. and their laws that can't be broken, that a woman cannot clear karma and evolve and come back to the next lifetime. She can't do that. So what happens to a woman? Well, a woman, when you, or whenever your spirit becomes that woman, you have to serve man so well that if Brahman, the head Hindu god, approves of how you serve man in this lifetime, you can come back as a man. But only as a man can you spiritually evolve. Oh. Yeah, I think most of the females that are involved in New Age wouldn't even know that. Just out of curiosity, the, the women's movement, the mm -hmm. uh, men becoming women, women yes. becoming men, teaching in kindergarten, uh, you can choose whether you're a boy or a girl. Mm. Uh, that's got to be a conspiracy. It's just sweeping the world right yes, now. Yes, it is. And it's spiritual. It's, it's very spiritual. It's demonic. Yes. Some good news. Yes. God has shown you that the glory I've been talking about for years now, it's here. It's here in our studio. It's here on the screen. It's here now. The glory is the presence of God. The glory is the goodness of God. God's presence is drawing closer to earth than ever before. And there are some good things mm -hmm. in store for planet earth. We've got good news. Amen. What are the good things you saw about the manifest presence of God, the glory of God? What did God show you? The first thing he showed me, Sid, was that he's going to fall that glory of God, that strong presence. He's going to fall it on those that are hungry. But the next thing he showed me is that the majority, especially as we move into this new awakening, that presence, that glory is going to fall on, as I said, hungry, but it's going to fall on the majority of them are non-Christians. In other words, sinners.
The least, the, the, like, yeah. the least likely. The I least believe. likely. And I went to the Lord, how, why? Isn't the church crying out for your yeah. presence? Don't we? We want this so much in our hearts. And he said, yes, but I said hungry. You're hungry, Alan. You'll, you'll receive it. He said, but there's sinners out there that are hungry for new hope. With everything that's been happening on the planet, they're hungry for new hope. They're hungry for truth. They're hungry for a God that actually will love them and not put them through pain. They're hungry for that. So the sinners are actually going to be crying out, just like I cried out. They're going to cry out, and that is where the glory is going to hit. I believe the majority of the people that get swept into the kingdom of God are going to be the sinners, but the ones that are hungry. They're, they're over with the world and with everything else from their leaders and their heroes and their politics or whatever, but they're going to be hungry to reach out for a God, a personal God, and He's going to match that. He's going to come down, and, and we're going to be swept we're going to be swept and we need to have our hearts right. Um, sometimes we're accused of not being tolerant. We need to have our hearts right that if God moves like that, it's OK. Let's accept him into the church. Let's accept him into the body. I'll tell you what. I can't wait for this. Mm-hmm. I, I believe a billion souls, many, most if not, will be young people that the parents have even given up on them. The world has given up on them. But God it's pure love, and He hasn't given up on you. And we are about, look, I don't know what's going to happen in the world. I've read the book of Revelations. I know there's bad things coming, but I don't even dwell on that no, anymore. No. I dwell on the greatest move of God yes. in history, Alan. Now, I want you to get this. Nest- oh, there's so many things we don't have time to, to go into. The, uh, the whole abortion issue, the population control, AV. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, the, the, the devil's reaching into all of these yes, a- a- uh, areas. But I want you to see his new show. It's on our network, it's a free app. Uh, we don't advertise much. We'll offer here. Give me that book over there. This is an amazing book. If you want a full understanding of this uh, for yourself and for your friends uh, that are ensnared in the new age, it's called, and I love this title, Authentic Awakening. And a subtitle is Dismantling the New Age Counterfeit. We have the ebook available. And if you will just go to sidroth.org slash truth, you will get the ebook immediately downloaded. And uh, th- this is the future of publishing, by yes. the way. Um, and if you would like to see Alan's show and you would like to see a seven day a week, 24 hour day network, of mostly original programming. We have over, I think, 33 shows Mm. like yours ready to come forward now. And um, I am believing, I'm gonna, our our network's called ISN. It's Supernatural Network. All you do is go to uh, the App Store, type in my name, Sid Roth. Uh, and the, a nice orange app, it says ISN, come, come on, and you can get it seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We're going to subtitle ISN, the Glory Network. Oh, I like and that. And shortly we'll subtitle Middle East Television. That is an on-air television network uh, that covers the entire Middle East, every home in Israel. We're going to subtitle that, the Glory Network. Uh, but um, Alan... I am so thrilled that you have devoted your life to turning the table. Mm. I mean, there are few people that have been on both sides of the fence and that sees the deception that is involved. So get the book, Authentic Awakening. Just, uh, just, just go to sidroth.org slash truth. Uh, get this information the easy way, not the hard way. <laughs> get this information the easy way, not yeah, the hard right. way. Uh, and uh, I can't wait for you to see Alan's brand new show, The Truth Project.